Hey everybody! In iOS 17, Apple added a new feature that allows you to use Spotify with your HomePod or HomePod Mini. It's still not a perfect integration, but it's more convenient than it used to be. In this video, I'll show you how to do it. First off, be aware that this still does require your iPhone with the Spotify app to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your HomePod, as this integration basically streamlines the AirPlay experience from your iPhone to your HomePod. Make sure your software is up to date with both your iPhone and your HomePods. You'll need to be running iOS 17 or newer on your iPhone and HomePod software 17 or newer on your HomePod. From your HomePod, just say, Hey Siri, play music from Spotify. She'll say, You'll need to continue on your personal device. Then on your iPhone, there will be a notification from Siri that says, Continue your request. Tap the notification and it will ask, I'll need to access your Spotify data to use the app. Is that okay? Tap yes. And she'll respond with, You can now ask me to play Spotify on HomePod. Now if you say, Hey Siri, play music from Spotify. It will open the Spotify app and play music for you. Once it's set up, it's pretty handy. More convenient than it used to be. Plus you can use Siri to play, pause, skip to the next track or previous track and even control the volume. Do you use Spotify on your HomePods? How do you find it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you have an Apple Watch and use Spotify, stay tuned for the bonus video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more tech videos, including tech how to's. See you in the next one. Check it out on Spotify. Woo! Hey everybody! It's been quite a while since I've discussed Spotify on Apple Watch, and since then it's really changed. Spotify now has a great full-featured Apple Watch app that not only allows you to operate independently from your iPhone, but also allows you to control many different devices you have playing Spotify content. In this video, I'll go over the Spotify Apple Watch app and show you how to use it. Let's get to it! So first, of course, you'll need to have Spotify installed on your iPhone. Once it's set up, the app should be available on your Apple Watch. To access the app on the Apple Watch, you can launch the app like normal from your app list. However, it also has many different complications available as well. I would recommend putting a Spotify complication on your Apple Watch face if you plan to use it often for convenience. If you're not sure how to add or adjust complications, Check out my Apple Watch user guide and tutorial in the card above. The free version of Spotify still requires your iPhone to be in Bluetooth range. However, if you have Spotify Premium, you can listen directly from your Apple Watch and listen offline without your iPhone in Bluetooth range. When using Spotify Premium, you can download music and podcasts to your Apple Watch so you can listen to them without an internet connection. This means you can leave your phone at home and take Spotify with you. You can store around 10 hours worth of downloads on your Apple Watch in most cases. More if you have more storage on your watch model. But it's important to note that there is a download limit of 50 tracks per playlist. To use Spotify on your Apple Watch, you'll need iOS 12 or newer running Watch OS 7 or newer. When you first run the app, it takes you to the basic playback control screen that is similar to the Now Playing app. The song, title, and artist display in the top part of the screen. In the controls below, you can play pause, move ahead one track, move back one track, control the volume with a digital crown, choose whether to add or remove a track from your library, and control the playback device. In most cases, you'll likely just be using it with your iPhone. However, I found this feature very powerful as I was able to switch playback between my iPhone and my Apple TV running the Spotify app from my Apple Watch. I thought this was really cool. When you switch devices, it moves the playback of the current track from one device to the other with a minor pause in the middle. Only downside I found is that the volume control on the Apple Watch does not control the music volume on my Apple TV when playing Spotify content. But still quite a useful feature to switch music from my Apple TV when I get home. When you swipe left from the playback screen, you can access your library or recently played tracks and playlists. 
When you swipe right, it tells you more about the current playlist. I've been testing the free version of Spotify and it's been quite useful. Even the free version allows you to control the music playback from your phone, including the volume for your headphones, just like the Now Playing app does for Apple Music, which I find very handy at the gym. You can leave your iPhone in your pocket while you adjust your music from your Apple Watch. However, if you do prefer using the Now Playing app on your Apple Watch, you can still use it to control the music once it's been started in the Spotify app. The only benefit I can see controlling it this way is if you want to stream the music to AirPlay devices from your Apple Watch, such as HomePods or AirPlay compatible speakers or devices. Overall, the Spotify Apple Watch app has really become quite powerful. And with a premium membership, you don't even need your iPhone to be present to use Spotify anymore. I think that would probably be great for those Apple Watch Ultra people who want to listen to some music or a podcast on the go. Do you use Spotify on your Apple Watch? How do you find the Apple Watch app? Did I miss any features you use? If so, please feel free to share them with the rest of us along with any thoughts or questions you may have about Spotify on the Apple Watch in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos. See you in the next one. Hey everybody, HomePods are great home speakers. Whether it's a HomePod mini in your bedroom or a stereo pair in your living room, they deliver rich sound and a decent smart home experience. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the most popular options and settings so you can get the most out of your HomePods. Let's get to it. The first setting that I find most people are surprised to learn about is that you can change Siri's voice. There's a wide variety of nationalities and voices to choose from. To test out the various options, open the Home app on your iPhone, then tap your HomePod. Then scroll down to the settings gear in the bottom right and tap it. Now scroll down and tap Siri Voice. Here's where all the options will be displayed. The standard where I am is American Voice 4, but there's lots to choose from. Give it a try to see which voice you like best. Ever find your home pods are too bassy? Whether you're listening to music late at night or just prefer less bass in your sound, there is an option to reduce the bass on your home pods. I personally use this when I have late night parties so we don't disturb the neighbors. Open the home app on your iPhone and tap the desired HomePod or HomePod stereo pair. Then scroll down to the settings gear in the bottom right and tap it. Then scroll down to reduce bass and slide the switch on. Give it a try. Some people prefer the sound with this option on all the time. The next HomePod feature I'd like to discuss is a new HomePod sound recognition feature. According to Apple, with sound recognition turned on, it will notify you when an alarm sound is detected in your home. Your HomePod will continuously listen for certain sounds using on-device intelligence. It will notify you when sounds may be recognized. To turn this feature on, go to the HomePod settings, the same as discussed before, and scroll down and tap Sound Recognition. Then slide it on. You can also decide whether you want all your HomePods to have it on or not beneath. Now if it recognizes a smoke or CO2 alarm, you'll get a notification. I think this is a great safety feature and recommend turning it on. Do you have a HomePod stereo pair and ever notice just how one HomePod answers any Siri requests? You ever wanted to change which one answers Siri requests? It's actually really simple. Go over to the HomePod you'd like to have answer your Siri requests all the time and use the touch and hold method to make a Siri request. Hey Siri, what time is it? It's 2.01 p.m. Now moving forward, every time you make a Siri request, with that stereo pair, that HomePod will answer. And lastly, I'd like to discuss what to do if you have Wi-Fi signal issues with your HomePods. Once in a while, I've noticed my HomePods have issues connecting to the internet, or my HomePod stereo pair audio drops out every so often when using them with my Apple TV. Oftentimes, a simple restart will resolve these issues. To restart your HomePod, just go to the HomePod's settings as mentioned earlier, then scroll down to the bottom and choose Restart HomePod. It will often take a minute or two for them to restart. Once restarted, I found the issue resolved most of the time. However, if you consistently have issues with your HomePods, you may need to reset your HomePod to factory settings. If you'd like to learn how to do that, check out my video, How to Reset HomePod or HomePod Mini, in the iCard above or description below. How do you get the most out of your HomePods? 
Any tips you'd like to share with the world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more tech videos, including tech how-tos. See you in the next one.